After completing the Dustcrete infill in our addition, I allowed everything to cure up and then came back through. This is the uh, Dustcrete once it's all cured. And I filled in all the spots at the top of the wall and the bottom of the wall and places where there was a subframing member still exposed and just filled those in with a little lime plaster so that when I came to do the actual layering up of the plaster walls, I wouldn't have any particularly deep spots that would cause things to uh, set up at uneven rates. So with everything filled in and prepped, I masked off some of the timber work and hydrated the dustcrete a little bit. And then using this pool trowel, I applied a, a scratch coat of plaster and worked essentially every section of wall all the way to completion so that I could uh, have the uh, undercoats curing at the right place when I added my finish coats. Mm -hmm. So basically just coming in with my margin trowel to clean up my corners and just get a uh, base coat on the dust creep, which I would then come back and scratch to key in for what would become the brown coat, the second coat of plaster after that. So you can see where I've got the holes in the dust creep from my spacers, and the plaster just fills those quite nicely without having to do any other filling. This wall that I'm doing here is the same wall that you can see in the dust creep video. And if you'll recall, I only filled about two thirds of the wall and then uh, stopped for the day and continued on the next day. And I absolutely had a very extensive crack that went right through this level that's right about uh, where that outlet is. And so yes, cold jointing in the dust creed infill process is very bad. So once I get this coat in, you'll see that I have an example here of the scratch coat, brown coat, and finish coat on these walls, and I will show you where we go from there. I've taken mason sand and screened it through a window screen. So mason sand is going to be sharp sand, not rounded river sand, but quarried sand. And to the four gallons of sand, I will add two gallons of type S lime and enough water to achieve the consistency, which I'll show you in a bit. To this, I will also add some reinforcement which is just fiberglass shards and those will give it greater crack resistance as I'm not entirely certain how my dustcrete walls will take plaster so just as an extra bit of insurance we'll add that and that should add some strength to the wall Let's mix the dry ingredients and then we'll add some water and get our plaster. I'm mixing here in a concrete tub. This could certainly be done a variety of ways in a concrete mixer or even a bucket with a, uh, an electronic mixing appliance of some sort. In these small batches, I think that uh, this is a pretty effective way. I did have a little bit of uh, lump from the, the lime putty that showed through and you'd probably get a more even mix with the fiberglass shards that come in at the end of this mix if you use some sort of a, a mechanical mixing device but really it's uh, it, you know kind of nice I think to do these things by hand sometimes and just enjoy the, the feeling of working with the materials and not have loud appliances and that sort of thing so you can see that I'm mixing here on the subfloor of what eventually will become the earthen floor in this room and definitely chose to do that so that my plaster falling off the wall as I applied it would not uh, interfere with any finished floor surface. So just mixing in these fiberglass shards here and they definitely expand and spread out. I would have done this um, 
on the scratch coat if I had had the material in time for the first walls that I did, but this worked out all right and was able to get them to bury pretty well. Travel and a Japanese stainless steel trowel. So basically, the idea is to get the edges good. Then the fields go pretty quick. Most of the trowel get some material on here. So I've got this corner. So I just add a lorp plaster, get my Japanese trowel, and push it in. To the corner. plaster, put the edge of the trowel against the wall, and then push it in. Once we get it all up on the wall and reasonably flat. We'll come back with the spray bottle and spray the blade of the trowel and the surface and smooth out all the pockets. So, if you have your edges like that, you can take large Gobs of material. And so that's the story. Now, I will come in first and deal with all of the edges. I will take my little Japanese stainless and I'll push any material off of the wood so I don't end up picking it up in my finish coat. And then with good pressure, just make that as neat as it can be and then we'll work the field with it. So my goal here is to get these rough parts smooth and shiny like the rest. You can see I just made a boo-boo there but easy enough to solve. I'm just applying a little bit of water to the trowel and to the wall surface and then with a fairly low angle, I'm pushing, not scraping. So this trowel is flattening the edges of the sand particles to the surface. This is what will make our wall smooth in the end and allow us to apply the lime putty with the pigment in a very thin layer which will prevent me cracking. So I do this immediately after the plaster is on the wall. If 
before it begins to cure. It's on, it's flat, it's smooth. It's not perfectly smooth. If you wanted to just have this as your final coat, you could invest a little more time and just getting it perfectly smooth. But actually the look that I'm after is more like marble. And so a little bit of variation is gonna add to that where the color coat will be a little thicker in some places and you'll see some veining and um, this is, is perfect for what I need. If you want a perfectly flat wall, it would be advisable to come at it with a wood derby before you try to smooth it and just get everything perfectly flat. That's not really my jam, but it can be done. Damn, you know. But set up enough, it's not moving. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up my pigment into my lime putty and we will go ahead and apply it it can take a while to get to this state depending on conditions this wall i let go overnight it was very cool that night so this room's around about 60 degrees and uh, probably about 80 percent humidity with all the lime evaporating That took about, oh, two hours or so. If you want to see how this lime putty is made, you can watch my cordwood construction video. I'll put a little card up here in the corner and show you how I make that lime putty. Basically just going through and making sure that I don't have any globs of you know, unhydrated lime first and then adding this iron oxide pigment I'll put a link in the description to uh, where you can buy these on Amazon and added about uh, oh about three teaspoons of pigment to this putty and just patiently worked it all in and got a, a good uniform pigmented lime putty working with these natural compounds you'll have a lot of variation in the intensity of color and you'll see that at the end of this video uh, the finished product of this wall versus the one that's uh, behind my desk and so you really have to play with these things if you want to be consistent in a room I would definitely recommend mixing all of your pigmented putty in a single batch and making more than you think you'll need and then that way you can get the same colors and there are many pigments um, that you can use. Not all pigments are going to work, but anything that's going to work in a masonry application, like a concrete stain, that sort of thing, could be used in this application. And with the iron oxide all mixed in, we can get to applying it to our soft set wall. So now I'm going to apply the uh, red iron oxide pigmented lime putty to this plaster wall. I use a wooden trowel as a hawk because it's light and I, I work on it such that I have a pile of fresh material here. I have a bit that I've scraped off my trowel that has some contaminants some grit from the wall in it. And then I go back and I use that to fill edges because they're where grit comes from anyway. So I minimize that in the field by segregating that off here. And then here I have waste material. It's just too gritty to work with. And then I leave this corner clear so that I can take my trowel and scrape off things from the outside edge because they'll start getting in my way and dragging into the work. So it's kind of uh, meticulous, but it's a system I've adapted. So at any rate, I'm gonna start up this corner over here, 
get my edges, pull it in, and I'm pretty much just gonna skim coat this on like I did the plain line putty on these gray walls. And uh, we'll see how that looks. And then I'm thinking I'll mix up some of that umber and just come right over it immediately before anything sets up. I will spritz this wall down a little bit with water just to make sure that we don't dry before we have a chance to bond. Away we go. I know what you're thinking. Boy, that's really red. And you're right. Got our first coat on. Everything is pretty smooth. I had a little bit of more to pull out. So I probably rushed the gun on the timing just a little bit. By that I mean uh, plaster sticking to my trowel and pulling away from the wall. So. Got all those beat down to a minimum. So I'm gonna wait overnight before I do the umber coat. But after that, we should get this effect, which looks like oxidized copper. So that's my hope. This is the lime putty with the umber pigment. Natural umber from Italy. The wall has set up overnight. Now I will skim coat the whole thing with the umber and the plaster will be done. off the skim coat of the burnt umber pigment and when the whole thing cured up considerably lighter than the other wall in question but it's got a nice look you can see that massive crack there above the outlet from where I cold joined the dust creek no big deal here's that other wall behind my desk considerably darker and uh, yeah really hard to hit those things unless you're accurate with your pigment measurement the room as a whole, I think, is quite delightful. I'm very fond of the gray and white look on this end wall here. And the one that's exactly opposite here, I'll show you, is my favorite. That wall section to the right of that barn door. And here's a, a close-up of what that looks like. Pretty good. I think uh, actually doing less flattening work might be more my style. <laughs> 